So we've seen some atoms bonded together in different arrangements, but we haven't talked much about types of bonds. There are two different important types of bonds that can form molecules. Those are ionic bonds and covalent bonds. We're going to start with the ionic bonds. An ionic bond is pretty straightforward. An ionic bond is a bond that forms between two ions. You have a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion, and as we know, opposites attract. The positive and negative ions are attracted to each other, and that forms an ionic bond. One of the most common ionic bonds that we are familiar with is the bond between sodium and chlorine that gives us sodium chloride, or salt. In the case of sodium, which is way over on the left-hand side of the periodic table and likes to give away that one lone electron that it has, sodium will give away an electron. Chlorine, all the way over on the other side of the periodic table, has an almost full shell of electrons and would really like an electron. And it will take that electron that's released by the sodium. So now sodium has a positive charge and chlorine has a negative charge, and they're attracted to each other, and they form sodium chloride. Since ionic bonds form between positively charged ions and negatively charged ions, we often see that ionic bonds are forming between atoms that come from opposite ends of the periodic table. So when we see an atom from the left side of the periodic table that's forming a bond with an atom from the right side of the periodic table, that's very likely to be an ionic bond, where one atom gave up an electron, one took an electron, and then those positive and negative ions were attracted to each other. One thing about ionic bonds is they're not particularly strong in water. Once water is involved, ionic bonds tend to fall apart, and we'll look at that more a little bit later. A stronger type of bond is a covalent bond. In a covalent bond, you don't have one atom giving away an electron and another atom taking the electron. In a covalent bond, the two atoms are sharing a pair of electrons. And when they share the electrons, both atoms get to claim that electron as part of their electron shell. Let's look at water as an example. In water, we have hydrogen. Hydrogen has one lone electron, and it would really like to have two in its inner shell, so it would like another electron. Oxygen has eight electrons, two in the inner shell and six in the outer shell, meaning it really would like two more electrons in its outer shell. So one hydrogen atom comes up to the oxygen, and they end up sharing a pair of electrons. One of the electrons that came from oxygen and one of the electrons that came from hydrogen are now being shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen. So both the hydrogen and the oxygen get to claim that electron. They both feel more stable. Since oxygen really needs two extra electrons, it needs to have this arrangement with two different hydrogens. The first hydrogen provided one of the electrons it needed to help fill up its shell, and the second hydrogen shared the other electron that it needed to give the oxygen a full shell. So now we can see that each of the hydrogens has two electrons, that's a full outer shell for hydrogen, and the oxygen now gets eight electrons in its outer shell, which is a full outer shell for oxygen, and both atoms are now stable because they formed a covalent bond making the molecule water. Some atoms need to share more than one pair of electrons in order to become stable. So let's think about oxygen again. One atom of oxygen has six electrons in its second shell and needs two more. If I have two atoms of oxygen, each atom could share two electrons, and that would make it happy. When two atoms are sharing two pairs of electrons, we call that a double bond, because it's not just one pair of electrons, it's two pairs of electrons that are being shared between those atoms. In a structural formula, this is written by drawing two lines between the atom symbols. In rare cases, we can even see triple bonds, where two atoms would share three pairs of electrons. That's what we see when we have two nitrogen atoms bonded together, is there's a triple bond between them. And occasionally we see triple bonds between carbon atoms as well. When it comes to sharing electrons in a covalent bond, the electrons can be shared evenly, or the electrons can be shared unevenly. And this gives us two different types of covalent bonds. If the, two electrons share, if the two atoms share electrons evenly, 
And it's a nice, fair, shared arrangement where each atom gets the electrons as much as the other atom does. That's called a nonpolar bond. There's no difference between the atoms. They, they both share the pair of electrons evenly. However, some atoms like electrons a little better than others. And so they want to have the electrons more than an even share of the time. When the electrons are drawn more to one of the atoms in the bond than the other, then the electrons spend more time around that atom, and that gives us what's called a polar bond, because we have a difference between the two atoms in the bond. One of the atoms gets the electrons more than the other. This uneven sharing, where the electrons are around one atom more, makes that atom a little bit more negative, because the negatively charged electrons are over on that end more often. And it makes the other atom, the atom that doesn't get the electrons as much, just a little bit positive. Now these aren't whole charges, they're what we call partial charges, just a little bit. We give them this funny squiggly delta symbol to represent that it's only a little bit of a charge. A good example of this are the bonds in water. Oxygen really likes electrons a lot, and hydrogen, not so much. So when we have a covalent bond between hydrogen and oxygen, the electrons are not shared evenly. The electrons tend to spend more time over on the oxygen end of the bond. That makes the oxygen end of water just a little bit negative and the hydrogen ends of water just a little bit positive. To get an idea of whether electrons are going to prefer to be closer to one atom than to another, we have to think about a concept called electronegativity. An atom's electronegativity is how attractive it is to electrons. How much does it attract electrons towards itself? In general, the further you are towards the top of the periodic table, the more electronegative an atom is. So for example, nitrogen being higher on the periodic table than phosphorus is more electronegative than phosphorus is. Also, being more towards the right side of the periodic table makes atoms more electronegative than being towards the left. So we can see that oxygen is more electronegative than something like boron because it's further towards the left. It wants the electrons more. The most electronegative atom is fluorine, all the way over here on the right side at the top row of the periodic table. We don't count those noble gases because they're already perfectly stable and happy. They don't want any more electrons at all. When two atoms have the same or nearly the same electronegativity, then they'll tend to share the electrons evenly and form a nonpolar bond. When two atoms have very different electronegativities, they'll share those electrons unevenly, and that's what's going to form a polar covalent bond. For the purposes of our class, Anytime you have two of the same atom forming a bond, so oxygen with oxygen, or carbon with carbon, or hydrogen with hydrogen, or nitrogen with nitrogen, that's always going to be a nonpolar bond. Because the two atoms are the same atom, they attract the electrons equally, neither is more electronegative than the other, so it will be an even sharing and a nonpolar bond. For our purposes, whenever we have two atoms that are different, like a carbon with an oxygen, or an oxygen with a hydrogen, then we'll consider those to be sharing unevenly and form a polar covalent bond. One big exception to this that's really important that you remember, carbon with hydrogen is basically a nonpolar bond. Even though those two are different atoms, they have similar electronegativity, they share electrons very evenly, so a carbon with a hydrogen bond is nonpolar, and that's going to be important once we start looking at the properties of different molecules. There's one more type of bond I want to talk about, and this one's a little bit different because it's not a bond between atoms that forms a molecule. Instead, it's a weak bond between different molecules that just holds them together a little bit. Hydrogen bonds are weak temporary interactions that hold molecules together. Hydrogen bonds only form between polar molecules because the weak attraction between the molecules depends on the slightly positive and slightly negative areas of the molecule that are caused by sharing the electrons unevenly.
Water is a great example of a molecule that forms hydrogen bonds. Here we have a water molecule that has an oxygen and two hydrogens. Because oxygen and hydrogen form a polar bond, the oxygen end of the molecule is a little bit negative from having the electrons a little more, and the hydrogen ends are a little bit positive from not getting to have the electrons as much. The slightly negative oxygen ends are attracted to the slightly positive hydrogen ends of different water molecules. And we have a weak interaction holding these water molecules together temporarily. We can see this in other polar molecules as well, like a molecule of ethanol. If we look at this molecule of ethanol, we have a bond between a hydrogen and an oxygen. The oxygen is going to be a little bit more negative and the hydrogen is going to be a little bit more positive. So the little hydrogens on some of the ethanol molecules are attracted to the oxygens on other molecules and that forms weak temporary interactions that we call hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds between ethanol molecules are what hold the different ethanol molecules together and allow it to be a liquid rather than a gas at room temperature.